so we're gonna make some really cute little things for Easter. We're gonna start off in the Cricut design space. I've already uploaded, or I'm showing you how to upload this uh, file that I got off of Etsy. It is these really cute little bunny bait things adorable. I'll link where the shop that I bought it at through Etsy uh, down below so you can check it out. But you're going to basically just upload it like you normally would. And we're going to be doing this as a print and then cut. Don't be, you know, don't get intimidated. It's really way easier than you think. You're going to, of course, choose print to cut when you're uploading it, like you're seeing here on the screen. Um, if you want more of a thorough, like, tutorial how to do print and cut, just let me know. And once you get it in, basically everything really acts like it normally does in Cricut. The difference is that you print it on your computer and then it gives you some like border for the Cricut to look at and then it's gonna cut it out. It, is, it couldn't be easier guys, do not worry. I'm gonna list the actual measurements that I used down in the description box because I had to play around with it to make sure that it would fit the little bottle and I'll link the bottles down in the description box too that I got off of Amazon, the whole thing. Don't worry guys, I got you. Cause some of it is trial and error, finding it online, what other people have used. I've already done it for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna print these out. I believe I ended up doing like 10 copies. So I ended up doing 20 little bunny baits to take over to the shop. They are adorable. I have to make some for my kids and cousins and all of that, which reminds me, I definitely need to make it for my nephews. They're gonna think it's adorable too. Um, that's neither here nor there. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get these going on the Cricut. I do, I think I can get two on one sheet of paper. I'm gonna put it on like the 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to send it from this point once everything's fitting the way I want it to. I'm gonna send it over to my printer and it just pops up, send to printer. As long as you have it set up on your computer to work with your printer, you're gonna be just fine. Make however many copies you want to have. I ended up doing 10. This was my first go around practice run, check the sizing kind of thing. Um, but I'll list it down below for you. So it's gonna print up on my printer and then once you're done with that, you're gonna put it on your Cricut mat just like you would if you were cutting paper because it's paper. Um, now, if you have never done this before, make sure you're going through the um, ca the calibration. Cricut walks you through the whole steps. We're going to make this as we are cutting the um, cardstock. So I'm going to go to browse materials. I'm going to look up cardstock and I'm going to select the 80 pound cardstock. So whatever cardstock you have, you could even technically do it on regular printer paper and it's just going to be a lot more flimsy. Just so you know, it's not the harder card cardstock is going to be better for you to put this teeny tiny little bottle in. I'm not going to show you the process of like filling the bottles because that's pretty self-explanatory. You fill it up. I, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. I actually used a, um, an oatmeal mix I'll tell you about in a second. Um, when you're peeling it away from your Cricut mat, just make sure that you're pressing it, like peeling the Cricut mat off of it. That way it doesn't curl up on you. It ends up not being all wonky and everything like that. So you'll notice you can see from the back that it has the little spots for the little bottles to go in and it's absolutely adorable. Uh, this one is made just to print out the blue and here they all are kind of assorted. The, like I said, the mix for it is actually the dinosaur oatmeal mix mixed up with some like Easter colored, like candy sprinkle stuff. I thought it was really cute because at first I was like, I'm going to take out the eggs. And then I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to take out the eggs because that's even more adorable. On to our next one. This one's way more spring inspired. I have already given a thorough coat of paint to this little trough that I think I got from Hobby Lobby. And I am using a JRV stencil. It is called, it has Main Street written on it. And then also one of the um, stencil brushes, I think also from JRV. And the paint, the green color paint, I want to say is aviary, I think. And the, then the black is Little Black Dress. And those are both from DIY uh, paint. And when I'm doing these stencils, it is curved. So make sure you tape it down if, if you're doing it on a curved surface, something kind of sim similar, comparable. And I'm just going straight up and down and really holding down my stencil because it is curved. It's not just going to lay flat. So those are just little tips and tricks. If you are really intimidated by using a reusable stencil like this, you can always put down a layer of the same colored paint like in this case it would be aviary for me you can always put that down first and then do your 
whatever color on top of it. So like in this case, it would be the black. So that's, that's an option that you can do. Um, this piece of, of a uh, little trough, it is metal. So I did do a spray of um, the clear matte spray paint just to let you know. So if you do end up getting something metal, give it a good coat of clear matte. I'm gonna take from DIY, this is the copper, I think, it's either copper or rose gold. It's a wax that they sell. I think I own just about every one that they make now. <laughs> I love using all of these different waxes and stuff. I think it's just really fun. I'm first gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna add some dark and decrepit dust, thinking like, okay, I'm gonna make it look way more like rust. And then I'm going to, you know, just tap it in just a little bit and give it a good mix. And it's going to give me that really rusty look. This like copper, I think it's actually called copper penny. Maybe that's what it is. I don't remember. And then I put down too much. It's, it's a thing, guys. It happens. <laughs> Anyways, I finally get it to be more of the coloring I want, more of that rusty look. And I'm going to just go ahead and give a whole lot of accents to it. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be great. I'm sorry, I don't think I have a finished picture for you because this baby has been over at my shop since Christmas. <laughs> I did this around Christmas time thinking like, okay, it's green, it'll work with Christmas decorations, but then it's still a pretty green that'll work perfectly fine for spring, summer, any time of year. If you have farmhouse decor, green is your friend. You can use it no matter what time of year it is, it's gonna work out just fine. I do, like I said, I'm going in and I'm trying to add this wax into anywhere I'm thinking would have a natural rusting. So in these little edges, in the little creases, just anywhere where like water would settle a little bit more easily. And once I'm done with that, I will then come in and dirty it up a little bit with some of the dark wax, I think. Pretty sure it's dark wax. What this is going to do is kind of just add another layer of, we'll call it realism. Wax and layers makes like chef kiss perfection realism of how things would look if it was really aged, right? That's the look we're all going for. We want that more naturally occurring looking aged effect on all of our farmhouse decor and this is no different so the, as you go and you need more and more you can just add more and more there's tons of different wax color options this one i believe is the black so again just layering in different colors and different options and if you get a little streaky like i am right here just take a little bit of clear wax and you can wipe it away if you don't end up being able to blend it out as much as you want but we are all done with that one and let's go ahead and move to the next one. All right, so on this sign, I am starting off with a piece of wood, believe from Michaels that I've already done like a light gray stain. I believe it's the water-based stain from Folk Art in the color gray. And I have already applied my Cricut vinyl sheet. You don't need to see that. If you have a Cricut, you know how that goes. Um, and it's super simple. And I'm gonna just take a stencil brush again and pouncing straight up and down with the same colors, black as the last one, and going to just fill in. And I'm gonna fill in all but the O because I'm gonna use that really adorable little beaded reef thing uh, that was a Christmas decoration that I got that I never used and it's going to make the perfect little beaded wreath for the O. So it's kind of still in a very traditional farmhouse-y thing where you switch out the O for something like a little wreath. But we're not going to do green anyway. We're going to use the beaded one because I thought it was a little cool little play. I don't know if I've seen anybody do it and if I have then, then I have. I don't know. Um, so we're just going to remove all of that. Be kind of careful try to go with it as much as you can sometimes you'll get little bits of this thin wood that'll kind of peel back if you do that just touch it up with the paint no one will even notice and especially because we're gonna end up distressing it anyways right <laughs> you know the way things work around here if you've been here for a little while um i am also going to remove the little o the little uh fill in part from the o as in just a minute I'm going to clean up my little reef, make sure I take off the little hanger, the whole thing. I want it just to be the beads and we're going to add a little bit of greenery to it just because that to me looks more like the very spring like inspired look that I'm going for today. Have you guys been seeing those? They have these little beaded reefs um, at the Dollar Tree that are the big ones and I think that they are so much fun to just kind of be able to start that without having to go through the process of stringing all your beads <laughs> so we're gonna go in with some dark wax yet again and I'm gonna go a lot heavier on kind of the outer 
rim outer edge frame part of this sign, I guess, because it makes more sense to me that that would be a little bit dirtier and we want it to stand out a little bit. I want it to look like it's an actual framed piece, not just one, you know, flat piece of wood. I will go through this process, of course, and get it nice and dirty, if you will. And then we're gonna actually just add on that beaded wreath. I think I actually add the hardware first because anytime you're ever gonna put something on a sign that's three-dimensional, that's an extra piece, you wanna do your hardware first because it's gonna be a big, big pain to add on anything after that. I I have learned the hard way many times. Uh, see, I just had a little spot that had kind of peeled up a little bit, so I'm just gonna add in a little bit more wax in that particular spot. Once we're done with the wax, <laughs> let's go ahead. Hello, there we are. Oh, am I done with the wax? Nope, oh, I'm gonna fix a couple of spots. Like I said, you just get a teeny tiny little brush and fix any little spots of imperfection that you can't handle being wrong. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add on some of these lamb's ear. They're from Walmart like circa like three years ago. I don't know if they still carry it, I imagine they do. You guys let me know in the comments below if you are often going over to Walmart for their greenery, their floral, their whatever. Let me know if they still have this greenery, the little lamb's ears, and if it's still $2 for a pick. I think it was, and it's probably a bigger pick than what I have left, I mean, I just kinda, steal what I can from it. And at this very moment, I am being super lazy and not going out to my car to get my glue gun. I had to take my glue gun to something for a kid activity. Um, not my, my kids weren't using the glue gun, but I had to put some stuff together. So I took my handy dandy glue gun with me. Of course, what crafter would be without it in that situation? And I didn't want to go out to the car and get it. So I was like, I'm just going to tie it together. I'm going to make this work without my glue gun. It didn't work out that way. I went outside, got it. <laughs> uh, so I do tie it together though. I want to kind of keep those little pieces together so that they're not gonna go anywhere. And I kind of hold it up to my sign. It's propped up right in front of me. And then here I went outside and actually got my glue gun because it wasn't, it wasn't gonna happen otherwise. All right, so now I've got my glue gun and I've got some of this farmhouse style ticking ribbon is that what it's called um like with the green stripes kind of thing anyways i am going to use that to cover up my little bit of twine that i have there in the middle because it's not it doesn't look right nope i don't have my glue gun yet <laughs> i'm still trying to use something else i am trying to use some of that um glue from the dollar tree that's just like a super glue it's not it's not don't bother don't bother with it um, I'm going to go ahead and do the hardware on the back of this. I don't remember if I actually, fin nope, I didn't finish the wreath yet either. I'm all over the place today, guys. Um, I'm going to just put one of these little hangers. I'm just going to use my measuring mat with my head all up in the way. You get a really good look at my curly hair. I just got it highlighted, so it's nice and pretty for you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my measuring mat, though. Um, don't mind my head in the way. I have to be able to see, obviously. Uh, I'm going to use my measuring mat though to make sure that my little hanger is right in the middle. Sometimes I will use those. A lot of times I use those little, um, I guess it's called like a D hook. It's in the shape of a, a D ish. Uh, I sometimes use those, but I don't use these very often. I was like, you know what? This is a, probably a really good thing to use. I thought I would use my little, um, like my little craft knife to get my little holes set all in there and I decided again, stop being so lazy, and I'll get the drill out and actually use that to make my um, to make my pilot holes. You don't need much of a pilot hole, but you need a little something because those screws are so so tiny, they're next to impossible to make sure that you got in there. Make sure when you're doing that that you're not pushing it too far in. Uh, depending on how thick your wood is, you don't want to go down too far. And I will then use just a regular handheld little screwdriver. This little guy I got as a giveaway from a creator over on Instagram. And it is the handiest darn thing. I tell you what, get yourself one of these. They have all of the different... Um, a ta different, you know, heads to the screwdriver are all like kept in with it. It is the, the, the best thing ever. 
Uh, so I will get those all set up and have the hardware on here. That way you don't have to deal with it and it's just ready to go. And now we can actually work on getting the little wreath all set up and attached and everything. So I've got the ribbon, like I said a few minutes ago, and now I've got the hot, glue, the hot glue gun and I'll go ahead and get the ribbon all set up right here in the center. And then I'm going to add some ribbon onto my beaded wreath to get that set up where I can kind of make it look like it's hanging on that sign. So I skipped past the shoestring bow. I just added it right in front of the greenery because it's it's nothing miraculous, guys. It's just an easy shoestring bow. And then I'm going to take these the same ribbon and I'm going to put it just right in the middle of two beads, right in between the two of them, and hot glue it in there, hot glue the greenery on it. And then I'm going to kind of make it look like this faux hanging. That's what I was going for. I'm not sure how great it was executed, but I'm going to actually just go ahead and attach it. I should have actually left that piece. I shouldn't have made it so short. And I kind of try to make it look like they're tied together, like they're tied, but that's how it's tied onto the, the little beaded wreath. Anyways, leave more space for your ribbon, glue it together to make like end to end and it, it, things would be a lot easier if I had left it a little longer. Anyways, then I'm gonna just glue it right onto the board. I'm gonna add some glue onto the ribbon as well as onto the beaded wreath. Here's how it turned out though. I think it turned out really cute and you guys will have to let me know down in the description box what you think. All right, so this one's gonna be super fast. This one I did quite a while ago. It has since sold, so I do not have a finished picture for you. I think I screen, like saved the screenshot of the end. I'm taking this Happiness is Homemade uh, stencil from Chocotour. I've got my link down below if you wanna check any of the Chocotour stuff out. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going to put it down into, it's like a pie holder, I think. It's like a cake holder, cake stand that kind of thing from Hobby Lobby. I got it when it was like 75, 90%, something like that off on clearance of spring stuff last year. So you can probably find it right now in the spring stuff. It's only at 40%. It takes forever for the spring stuff to go on a really good discount. And that's my favorite time to stock up on Hobby Lobby stuff clearance stuff that is. Uh, I'm going to go in with the black velvet chalk paste and I am just going to go through it really quick and easy. I'm going to keep this all to one color, I believe. If I remember right, I do it all to one color. Now this transfer has been well used or stencil, whatever you prefer to call it has been well used and it does not have a ton of stick left. That is a good time to use it on something like galvanized metal or anything that is like completely non-porous, like metal, glass, plastic, that kind of thing, because it will stick to those surfaces way, way better and it will make your life a lot easier when you're trying to take it off of that particular surface. So. I am I switching my colors yes I am all right we're going in with dune now sorry it's been a long time since I've made this uh we're going in with dune and that is what I'm going to use for the pie and I think I leave it just on the middle one because the two on the sides are kind of starting to hit that scalloped edge and that's just not something I wanted to deal with um trying to maneuver it and, and all of that so we're going to just peel it on back and you'll see it turns out looking super cute it is a cute little stand that will just be great for any farmhouse uh, place. I've got a few Easter ones we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go in with the color moss on some of these little wood cutouts. Like that was a house. This is just a little, I think three by three or maybe four by four block. Uh, we're gonna go in with a little bit of the surface wax from Chocotour. Any wax, white wax, or not white, I'm sorry. If you want the white cast, then it's fine. But any wax will do pretty much. You just want to apply a small amount. And if you ever feel like you get too much, like I'm definitely feeling like I added too much on these little blocks, you can take your heat gun, which I believe I'll show you in just a second. You can actually take your heat gun and almost like melt it into the wood. Your results will be better, basically. Yep, see, I'm taking my heat gun, melting it kind of in. You can wipe it off, melt it, wipe it off. You know what I mean? Like kind of really get it built in to the wood so it's not sitting so much on top and making it to where your paste or whatever doesn't, uh, doesn't adhere as well as it should. Now that it's going to wipe off, it just, it really just literally won't stay. It won't, it won't transfer the, the paste to the, the design paste to the actual, uh, item that you're doing this to. I don't know. 
Um, so these are some of the little minis that came out for Easter this year. They're really, really cute. So I'm going to just do kind of like an assortment on these little things. So this house has this little lamb. I'm going to go in with the color Dune. And I had to kind of like reconstitute it. It was a little too dry. You can just add some uh, distilled water. And I added too much. Either that or it's new. Nope, this is a brand new jar. It was a smidge on the too watery consistency at least for my taste so if you ever notice that if it feels like it's super super runny just let it sit open for a few minutes to let it dry out I should have done that because it would have turned out much better it's all right though things happen right I'm just going to make a few of these little blocks a little house a few little cute little items for like a tear tray or or a little shelf sitter that kind of thing so I'm going to do the eggs and then I did the lamb and I'm going to do, uh, I'm kind of trying to do more of like an Easter on one side and a spring on the other side. So it'll give them, a, give whoever ends up buying these at the shop a little bit longer time to have these out. So same situation on this one. On this side, I think I'm going to do, yep, I do do. And see, I'm trying to stir it up to really get this baby to dry out a little bit, but it was a lot too watery. So just be aware of that. If you get like a brand new jar let it dry. It sounds weird to say that, but let it dry out a little bit to make sure that it's not too watery or use less. If I used less of the wax, that probably wouldn't have been a problem. Here, I'm just letting you know that there are other things that you can use your, your transfers for. So this is a silkscreen transfer stencil, whatever you want to call it, um, if you don't know. And they come from Chocotour. Uh, there are other companies out there that have made them. I want to do kind of like a I guess a review. I don't know. I want to do like a comparison, like the like inexpensive ones you can buy off of Amazon that are made to look exactly like them. The, you know, the maker's box, maker's something, a maker's market. I don't remember, but a couple of other brands and try them out, see how they work, you know, compare them, give you, you know, my opinion and such. This one I am actually doing with the Prima uh, redesign chalk paste. You can get this from... Joann's online. I don't think you, I've never seen it in a store, but you can get it from Joann's online. And if you can get it like with a coupon when they're doing certain coupons and stuff, like a 25% off your whole order or whatever, it becomes quite a lot less than the chalk couture paste. And I think if I remember right, I think it's the same amount. Let me see. The, the Joann's one is 3.4 ounces. And I want to say the chalk couture one is three ounces. So you even get a little bit more and I like it just fine. I haven't been using it for a long time, so I cannot speak to how well it continues to work. You know what I mean? Like, I can't say like, oh, it dries out like three months from now. I haven't used it that long to know if it has any issues like that. I don't think so, though. It seems like it has been holding up pretty good. I've had it for a little while. No problems with it whatsoever. So something just to kind of keep in mind, if you think like you want to try out these silk screen stencils you want to try other silk screen stencils but you don't want to spend the I think it's up to like $16 for a jar of paste which I'll be really honest I think it's a little bit too much I think it's kind of ridiculous to be that much personally um I do make a commission off of it if you buy it from me but I think it's too expensive right now um they've been increasing prices and I'm not a fan of it but um, I'm, I joined it mostly for the discount. <laughs> so anyways, if you want that as an alternative, they don't have as many colors. They're kind of more seasonal, especially from Joann's, but that's an option for you too. So if that video of like a kind of comparison is something that would be interesting, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, but here's how all of them turned out. They turned out really cute. Uh, this is the spring side and then this is more of the Easter side. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It's kind of just a little mishmash of spring and Easter and all farmhouse, of course. And I would love to know what you're thinking of all of the things I made today. And if you have any questions or anything like that, drop a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.